Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. Now, here's a little scene I created with a simple player character that can hop around an environment and shoot at various cute enemy monsters. And this scene is okay, it works. Enemies are indeed destroyed when hit enough times by the player's purple projectiles, but let's admit it, everything does feel pretty limp and lifeless. Nothing the player does leaves a lasting impact on the world. There's a real lack of juice and fun. Now take a moment to compare this meek example with this one here. There's an incredible difference in how everything feels. It's just more exciting, visually pleasing, and interesting. Players will be immersed and just enjoy playing the game a whole lot more. Enemies explode in a shower of particles. The screen shakes and wobbles, corpses can be tossed around the environment. In short, what the player did has left a clear, satisfying mark on the game world. And so in this video, we will take a detailed look at how to do just that. Add real juice and appeal to your action slash adventure games by making enemy deaths and player attacks feel awesome. Everything covered in this video can be applied to any art style camera view and combat system, whether you're making a fast-paced top-down shooter or a combat-focused side-scrolling adventure. So in combat-focused games, where destroying vicious monsters and enemies is something the player will be doing a lot of, it's vital that the enemy's deaths and player attacks are satisfying and interesting. We can make combat and defeating enemies feel epic by adding plenty little details. They're small, subtle things, but added together they make a massive difference. So inside of Unity, let's begin bringing this floppy scene to the next level. First of all, enemies when killed should explode in a shower of particles. To do so, I'll head over to Create, Particle system. Now note that I have a couple detailed tutorials on how to make cool particle effects in Unity, which I highly recommend you check out. With that said, I'll start tweaking a couple settings here. I'll begin by changing the particles material to sprite default. This way I can enable the texture sheet animation module, change the mode from grid to sprites, and now I can simply choose a sprite inside of my Unity project, and all the particles that spawn from the system will take on that sprite appearance. I'll just choose a basic white circle. Now obviously I don't want this particle system looping, so I'll uncheck the looping box, change the duration to 0.1, and make the system spawn a burst of particles. I think a random amount between 10 and 50 is cool. And now I'll tweak some of these settings, making sure that values like speed, the lifetime and size of each particle are random. Also randomize the color of each particle, it'll just make it look more interesting. I'm making this particle system red to simulate the red blood of these little demon-like enemies. I'll now bump up gravity to 1, this way the particles will fall to the ground. I'll also enable the collision module, choose for type worlds, and since I'm working on a 2D game, I'll make sure to choose 2D. This will get each particle actually landing on the ground and colliding with characters in the world. I can choose how bouncy or damp each particle is. I usually set bounce to 0.25 which as you can see here, gets each particle gently bouncing around the scene and off enemies, which is pretty awesome. I'll now turn this red blood particle effect into a prefab, and inside of my enemy script, I'll create a new public game object variable called effect, and instantiate that at the enemy's position when it reaches zero health, just before destroying it. Make sure to drag and drop that particle effect inside of the effect empty slot in the inspector for the enemies and hit play. And whoa, killing these little monsters already feels more interesting and fun. Of course, you can simply duplicate this effect and change the particle's color to green for the green enemies if you want them to explode in a shower of green gore instead of red. Oh, and also set the particle system stop action to destroy. This way the particle system will auto destroy itself when it's done, making sure the scene doesn't get clogged up with useless effects that hurt performance. Awesome, so that's step one complete. 
Let's move on to step two. Now, although the particle effects look cool, it eventually disappears. There's no sign at all that an enemy once stood here. So it's a good idea to leave a lasting, juicy mark on the environment. I've gone ahead and imported a couple blood stains inside my Unity project. You can either draw these yourself inside of a 2D application like Photoshop or GIMP, or simply download a few cool images from internet with a transparent background. I'll now drag and drop one of these blood stains inside of the scene change its colour to red, and turn it into a prefab. I'll now spawn that bloodstained game object when the enemy reaches zero health, and you'll see the result, which looks pretty horrible. The blood stain is just glued to the screen in a very quirky way. I would rather the blood only marks the environment and characters, and we could do so very easily using sprite masks. So grabbing my blood stain, I'll change the mask interaction to visible inside mask. I'll now select this bush for example and add to it a sprite mask component. I'll simply drag and drop inside of this sprite empty slot that same bush sprite. And now you'll see that the blood is only visible when hovering on top of that bush. So you can add a sprite mask to all other parts of your environment and there we go. The blood only marks the worlds and doesn't stay in empty space any longer. And you'll now see how much better the result looks. If you're feeling a bit confused, note that I have a whole tutorial on sprite masks that you can check out. Of course, I recommend you also randomize the look of each blood stain, perhaps also its size, and get the green enemies instantiating green blood splashes to go with the green particles. Okay, things are starting to feel a lot better already, but obviously we still have a long way to go. So let's add some screen shake. Again, I have a complete video on that topic that you can check out. I'll now play my subtle camera shake animation whenever an enemy dies. And you'll see that destroying an enemy now gets the screen buzzing slightly, making the kill feel more impactful and satisfying. Very recently, I've discovered this awesome Unity Ripple slash Shockwave effect by one by one Design. The link to that post is in the description. To get the awesome screen ripple effect working inside of Unity, simply create a new shader called Ripple, open that up and delete all the code here. Now copy and paste all the code inside of this shader and paste it inside of your own. Now you can create a basic material called Ripple Mat, for example, and drag and drop that shader onto that material. Next up, you'll need to create a C Sharp script called Ripple Post Processor. And again, copy and paste the few lines of code found here inside of your own script. Now you can drag and drop that script onto your camera, and lastly, drag and drop the material we just made inside that Ripple material empty slot. And clicking the left mouse button, you'll get the scene rippling in a really cool way. You can tweak how strong the ripple effect is right here. A higher value meaning a stronger effect, and how long it lasts. These values here work great for me. Now, instead of getting the scene to ripple whenever the player hits the left mouse button, I'll drag and drop these lines of code inside of a public function called ripple effects, for example, which I'll call whenever an enemy is killed. And so now when I destroy an enemy, the screen ripples a bit, which feels awesome. Now of course, make sure the screen shake and ripple effect are subtle. It's easy to overdo these effects because they feel pretty cool. But the player, especially if he needs to destroy loads of enemies, might start to feel a bit nauseous and dizzy, if overdone. So yeah, keep that in mind. Alright, great, we're making some very nice progress here. The game feels so much better than when we started. How about we now make the enemies leave a corpse when destroyed, instead of simply vanishing? Now, note that you in no way need to follow all the steps I'm taking here. Maybe a blood stain or just particles is enough for your game. It's all up to you. But in this case, I think it would be fun if the player could bump into little dead monster bodies and get those bouncing around the scene. So I've gone ahead and made in Photoshop a corpse for each enemy. And now I'll simply spawn those corpses at the enemy's position when killed. I'll add a collider to those corpses and a dynamic rigid body with the gravity set to 1. This way they'll fall to the ground. I'll also create a 2D physics material with some bounciness and drag and drop that inside of the rigid body physics material slot. This way the corpse will bounce a bit. Lastly, I'll add another collider to the corpse. This one set to trigger so that I can instantiate some blood particles when the player collides with the enemy. Also consider adding a sprite mask component to these corpses. This way the blood smears will show up on those. And here's the result, some lasting, satisfying bits and bobs that can be interacted with and give the player that strong feeling that his actions 
have an interesting impact on the world. Now, before I forget, in my example here, I think that having the purple projectiles also leave a stain on the world will feel great. So I'll simply get the projectile spawning a purple stain when it collides with something. I'm telling you, adding juice to a game is such fun and very addictive. Once you get started, it's really difficult to stop, because each detail adds so much life to the experience and is such fun to implement. Also, having the enemy flash red or white, for example, when taking damage is a good idea. It will give the player some nice visual feedback that he indeed hit the enemy, and doing so is very easy. Just make an array of sprite renders called body parts inside of the enemy script, as well as a public color variable called hurt color. Now make a coroutine called flash, for example, and loop through all the sprite renders inside of the body parts array, changing their color to the hurt color, and then wait 0.05 seconds, for example, before changing those body parts back to their initial color. Of course, don't forget to call the coroutine whenever the enemy takes damage. Okay, back inside of Unity, I'll drag and drop all the sprites making up my enemy inside of the body parts array and choose for the hurt color some dark red. And you'll notice how hitting an enemy gets it flashing for a bit. A lot of the effects we've added to the game are really subtle and the player will hardly notice they're even there, but he or she will notice if they're not there. So take your time adding these little tweaks and refining your game's feel. It can really make or break an experience, keep the player engaged for only a handful of minutes or a couple hours. Anyway, before wrapping up this video, it's time to add some sounds. Never forget to add a few sound effects to your game. Even if you have a limited amount of time like during a game jam, they're so important and add so much juice and life to a game, even poor quality ones. Here's the game without any sound effects. And here's the same scene, but with a few sounds. Feel the incredible difference. Now, I'm planning on making a whole video on how to make sound effects and implement them to your games in the near future. So keep an eye out for that. You'll see it's a creative, very fun process. And that will mark the end of this tutorial. Now, you probably noticed that the lifeless scene I showed at the start of the video looks pretty different from the one I used throughout the tutorial. This is thanks to a few awesome post-processing effects which by the way is the topic for another tutorial I'm planning on making very soon. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Game feel is such a fascinating, fun topic. For more on it, you can check out my video on how to make a great player character and or environment. Why not also have a look at this awesome video by Mark Brown on Game Juice. With that said, it would be amazing if you considered supporting me and my content via Patreon. It's just so helpful and appreciated. Here's a list of the awesome people that have already done so. Okay, have a great day. Stay tuned for plenty more game creation content. Cheers.